everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's On Disney Plus podcast. In this bonus episode of the What's On Disney Plus Club, we're going to be doing like a retro review of The Princess Bride, which was added to Disney Plus in May in the US and Canada only. This is because of licensing laws. It just doesn't, um, it's not a Fox movie outside of those countries. So this was obviously going to be a big popular movie. And Interestingly enough, I had never seen this movie. So it was not really even a retro review for me because I'd never seen it before. But, so let's jump into, what were your thoughts on it, James? Really, so, really it. The, yeah, this is a, a proper retro review yeah. for me. I, I, I did watch it this past week, but I've also seen it several times uh, in the past, I don't know, two or three decades. And I really, really enjoy this, this story. I've got plenty of things to talk about with it, but since it's brand new to you, Let's hear what you've got to think. It was really strange. It was like a really weird movie. It was just like, it got some like funny comedy moments in it that you're not really expecting. Something that I don't know if they would do nowadays. It was very much an 80s thing. Um, and I just, yeah, it was, there were some certain bits of it that I liked. Um, especially like, you know, I thought that like the Fred Savage bit of like, it was quite funny with him sat there. I'm just thinking, he sat in my, you know, it was like, that's kind of reminds me of my bedroom. It's like, the, yeah, he's got the same Captain America toy and he's got the He-Man figures behind him that I had and he's got, he's playing it on there. So it's like, could sort of, in some way you could relate to that. And that whole thing about it, in fact, that it's got kissy bits in it. And like you said before, I haven't seen it because of the name of the title. And I had never seen it because I think every time I saw it in the video store, because it must have been there, it said The Princess Bride and that. And even though it had Andre the Giant in, I just never watch it. And I don't know. Um, it's strange because I don't know how I missed this movie because it, it, so many people were so excited about it. Maybe again, was it because Fox pushed it more in the US and Canada than they did internationally? Maybe that was a reason why. But I asked my wife and showed her some clips of the movie and she'd never seen it either. And which kind of was like, okay, well, she would have been a kid in the 80s watching this as well. So it wasn't just me, but it was a bit of an odd story. I, I, I like the first half and then it kind of went a bit weird in the, at the end of like the more like helping out and going, well, why did we need, is like, why did we need the, 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 the guy that was avenging his father? It just seemed like, I don't know, it was a really strange one of how they kind of all worked. And none of them really wanted to do anything. They were all just kind of bumbling their way through it, which I thought was quite funny to begin with. And then it kind of went a bit weird with the villains at the end. I mean, you could see that coming a mile away, but yeah, it was just a very odd little movie. And then you have that big rat suddenly, it's like, well, is this fantasy or real life? It was, couldn't quite make it it's, it's supposed to be fantastical real yeah. life you know uh it the 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 rodents of unusual sizes and the in the fire swamp and all that that it it always struck me as kind of a an odd segue in there mm. but again it was also the 80s uh, you look at movies like willow uh dark crystal mm. you know, movies in the same vein they all have those kind of weird moments where he's, I, this has nothing to do with anything else, but you, you want to just stick this in there. Uh, mm. Never ending story also has plenty of that, yeah. but it, it's very eighties movie right down to the fact that they, they didn't really clean up the prints all that much too. It, there were times when I felt like I was watching VHS again uh, and not in a nostalgic way. No, it was, it was funny. I'm just like, you know, you definitely, you know, the, like some of the set pieces, like when they were fighting and doing all the bits, like, okay, you can see what they've done there. Okay, that's fine. You can, you can uh, see the mat under yeah. the sand when they're, <laughs> they're dueling on top of the cliffs. You're like, yeah, I, the, the, the production value is definitely not uh, the highest, even for the time period. But I think what carried the movie for me, what makes it memorable isn't necessarily stuff like that, although that is a really yeah. good fight, the, the duel. Mm. Um, it's the the dialogue between yeah. the characters. You know, uh, Wesley has some great just deadpan snippy one liners and some great insults. Uh, many of these lines have entered into pop culture, uh, uh, just generic knowledge. Like you can go in at least here in the states, because yeah. like you said, it's it's very popular here in the states. You could probably drop, you know, inconceivable, and most people will be like, ah, oh, yeah, I get that, or or they'll. Yeah, that word you keep saying that yeah. word doesn't mean what you think it means and things like that um it it really is the the way the the dialogue was presented and the, just 
the dry wit of it. It, it. The way I think of this movie is it's like an old style Errol Flynn um, swashbuckling adventure. I mean, it's even got a pirate in it uh, combined with, you know, a little bit more modern snark. Not to say the, the Flynn yeah. movies weren't snarky. They definitely were for the time, but the, it got updated for, well, modern being the 80s at this point. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's, just, it's, it's for me, I kind of sit like, like I missed something. I've just like, I feel like I've missed this, this thing from the 80s that would have been kind of right up my alley. I'm just like, um, well, why did this just not, you know, it, it never seemed to be, I don't know if it wasn't on TV as much or just wasn't promoted, but if it, it's like you say, like inconceivable. I'd never even heard of that as a thing until Disney Plus had announced it. Um, I'm just like, why is everyone coming up? You know, the, the comments were just coming up and coming up. And I'm like, I don't get what this is. So watching it back, I was just like, oh, okay, I see what it was. And he's a, you know, he is a slimy little guy. And I liked all that. And I was just like Andre the Giant of like, sort of watching it there going, okay. It's like, I mean, I was, I'm a big wrestling fan. So I watched, I would rent out movie, the Andre the Giant videotapes all the time with him against Hulk Hogan from the video shop, but I never picked this movie up. And it's like, okay. I mean, you can tell his French accent. He's like, he really is struggling to um, sort of to, to speak, but it's like, it just works. I didn't really think much of the the, the two lead though. The, the girl and the, the main bloke was just a bit like, okay. It's like, they, I don't know what it was. It was funny because I didn't really connect to them at all. It was more the sidekicks were more the funny side thing. Yeah, well, the most of the memorable lines and most of the memorable scenes do come from the side characters. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. Uh, yeah. You killed my father compared to that. That's a famous one. Uh, inconceivable. That comes from a yeah. guy who dies in the first third yeah. of the movie. Uh, and then, of course, Andre. And you got characters like Billy Crystal playing Mad uh, yeah, well, Miracle I just Max. actually I had to look up. I just had to look up who he was because I'm there. I was sat there watching him. Who is it? Who is this? Because I literally, I mean, I only watched it like two hours ago. So it's, it's completely fresh off my mind. And I'm like, I recognize him. I know him from somewhere. Who is he? I know there's somebody under all that um, mask. I mean, even just like Mel Brooks, when he popped up in it, I'm like, okay. And then there was quite a few British actors and stuff popping up throughout of it. And I'm going, uh, it's like, okay, this is, this is definitely um, different. I'm glad I've seen it. I don't know if I would watch it again. Um, I, yeah. do th I do think it does rely a bit on you having grown up with it. Um, mm -hmm. Most, but that's going to be true of almost every movie from the eighties and even moving into the nineties. Now, a lot of what we consider classics kind of were because they were what we grew up with. And some of them have an age role. I think this one has aged fine. I think I could drop this in front of most people and get, they'll yeah. at least be entertained. It might yeah. not be the cultural phenomenon that it was originally, mm -hmm. But I think you can sit down and watch it and go, that was a, an entertaining movie. It's got the right bits of humor. It's got some darkness to it. It's, it clearly does not take itself seriously at all. I yeah. love that one of the, the, main villain, the, the main villain's henchmen, you know, uh, Count Rogan. Yeah. Uh, he's basically a middle, middle manager. He's like, describe how the torture machine made you feel. And remember, this is for posterity. It's just like, it's so absurd, but yeah. I enjoyed it, you know. Yeah, it's kind of it had a really those that really have a weird sort of humor to it, and I did I did enjoy it. It was definitely one of those movies of going, okay, I'm I'm glad I've seen it. I'm glad I've I've kind of got reference to it, and just like, okay, this is this was an odd movie. But then there's a number of movies I think back of like I know like with my wife of things like Labyrinth and Dark Crystal and stuff of like you could it was so easy at that time where you could there would be a movie and you would just if you weren't interested in the videotape that was it you just you just no one would have influenced <laughs> you know you had your friends and stuff but there was no outside influences of your little circle and therefore you wouldn't if you if no one said it was good you wouldn't know about it you just would you know it's such a weird thing to think of now of when you know we're all being influenced from everywhere and everyone you know when something's good we kind of hear about it and when something's bad you know everyone piles on it but back in the 80s that wasn't a thing you your your little group in your school group or whatever it was and your family if they didn't get into it you wouldn't you wouldn't know about it yeah and i remember specifically as a kid going to the movie uh 
rental place. It was, it, this was even pre blockbuster. Mm -hmm. This was the place that would eventually yeah. become blockbuster locally. Um, and I would see movies that I now know about. Uh, yeah. But back then I was like, I'm not interested. Like this is spinal tap uh, UHF, the, the weird Al mm -hmm. movie, stuff like that. And like, and eh, it doesn't look interesting at all. And now I'm like, Oh, that, that would have been great to watch back then. But it, it all, it's a different culture. Like you said, uh, if, if my friends or my parents weren't talking about it, I didn't know about it. I didn't know if it was any good or not. And, and you really did rely a lot on that word of mouth. Now, you know, you go online and, oh, is, uh, is Trolls World Tour worth watching? Uh, let's see what people say. Uh, I, I know you, so I'll trust your opinion a little more. But lots of people are saying, you know, it's worth watching. It's not worth watching. It's funny because I remember, um, it's like as a kid of being out in America in the 80s, and uh, there was adverts everywhere on posters and billboards for All Dogs Go to Heaven. Mm. And it was everywhere, right? And of course, came back to England, and I, def I think it was out like six months afterwards, so I never bothered seeing it. But I always remember that thing of like seeing billboards for movies that we I don't know if necessarily in the UK we had the same kind of style because we're a lot more protective of where adverts can go. And it was just that kind of thing of like that F that is, and I know like when I go to Disney World and stuff, you know, you're on the buses and you're seeing all these different TV shows that you've never heard of. And it's amazing how that all can influence of the fact that you don't know what, what any of this is. And the Princess Bride kind of was definitely someone that just slid completely under the radar and watching it there going, this is good. I mean, even like those, I remember now, it's like, it's funny now of like Deadpool, uh, once was it uh, Once Upon a Deadpool? When they re-released a trailer and they had, you know, Deadpool telling the story to Will Savage and they were like recreating that whole not, uh, was it, no, Fred Savage, Fred, sorry. Fred. Um, of him just sat there and like, now it makes sense. But at the time, it didn't make a single bit of sense at all what that was in reference to. And see, that right there is the thing. Um, this movie alongside, I don't know, maybe two dozen other movies, mm. uh, you, you want to watch the movie just so you're in on the joke. Yeah. Whether or not you end up enjoying the movie, now you can go, oh, I know why people were saying inconceivable. I know yeah. why you've got a sick Fred Savage getting read a story by like Deadpool or, or like, and there are these movies and, and in some cases TV shows, but where if you're at least familiar with the source material, some other things become yeah. significantly better. Uh, the Simpsons are notorious for this. Like yeah. there's a lot of jokes in the Simpsons where you go, if you're very familiar with Stephen King novels or yeah. maybe Alfred Hitchcock movies, a lot of the jokes hit harder because you're like, oh, uh, that scene where, mm -hmm. where Maggie is in the daycare center and all the kids are just staring at Marge when she's like, oh, that's from the birds. But if yeah. you don't, it, it's still funny even if you don't know it, but if you, yeah. you're like, oh, it, 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 it takes it up another level. And Princess Bride is one of those movies where if you're familiar with it, a whole lot of other jokes and a whole lot right. of other shows and movies suddenly make a lot more sense. It was fun. I mean, I just, there was certain things. It's like, I think this, I still go back to that rat. That rat really was the one thing of just going, what, what's this? It's like, it, it, it's like something went a bit fantasy, but it was like up till then it kind of been in the world of like real of like, you know, is it just an old story? And then, you know, he's, I think there was, a, there was a mention of him talking about Australia and all the rest of them. Well, when was this set? <laughs> it's like, yeah, even... <laughs> if, it, if it's Australia, then what? It's at least 1780 something? Yeah. You know, I, I don't remember the exact yeah. year. But I know, uh, if they're shipping the criminals off there, we're, we're talking at least like probably 1800s, uh, which... 1770, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the aesthetic doesn't work at all for the 18th century. Uh, but I think that's the point is it's supposed to be fantastical and it's, and you're not supposed to take it too seriously. That's no. why it's bookended by yeah. Fred Savage and, and the grandpa, you know, they're going, was that, that don't was take this seriously. Wasn't it? Was I think it? it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I just realized it, then it wasn't, it wasn't Mel Brooks. It was Mel Smith. Um, I knew it, I was wondering, it. I was like, I don't remember Mel. No, it is what it was. Um, we had a TV show. He used to do a uh, comedy show when I was a kid. Um, I think it was like Griffin Mel or something. They, Griffin Smith or something like that. And I saw instantly recognized him as like a British, um, sadly he died, but it's like, Oh, okay. He was like in this and like the fact he was like, couldn't speak and suddenly like, Oh no. Yeah. Now and then he had a full on English accent. And I was just like, things like that were like, Oh yeah, that's cool. And like, you wouldn't necessarily picked up on, but this is all these years later. But I was sitting there going, 
Yeah, I enjoyed I I I'm really glad I watched it. It was definitely that kind of weird thing around wow, why hadn't I not seen this before? Why did this skip past me? And obviously, you know, I think, was it 1987? So by the time it would have been in video shops, I'd have been eight or nine. So therefore, yeah, I was bang on, you know, we we're in that sort of territory of The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast where I just didn't watch. You know, you, they were not movies that you went into. The Princess Bride was, or the, um, would have been enough to just put me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's understandable. I think it's hilarious that that is a plot point within the movie, yeah. but it's totally understandable. And even though I have seen it before, I didn't see it until I was an adult. I mm. I think, or on that threshold, it might have been in my late teens. Either way, I didn't see it when it came out. I didn't see it in the early 90s. I didn't see it until closer to 2000. So he, even then, I didn't like grow up with the culture of it. And I'm just, yeah, because it's funny now, because I'm just looking here, like what the videotape looked like, and it had them both just on a hill, just about to kiss. And I just think that that probably would have been enough just to, you know, next. (laughs) Absolutely. You you can say all you want. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a a VHS by its slipcase or whatever. But we absolutely do. 100%. And it it is funny. I mean, yeah, you think now like YouTube, um, like, thumbnails and you see it with disney plus and netflix where they have all the their thumbnails put together and they're trying to sell you on the idea within that little one that little picture is the only thing they've got to kind of hook you in and they keep changing the thumbnails to kind of make it look like you did something different um but yeah it is such a a funny a funny weird little 80s movie that um i would say to go see and i wonder how it i know it, it's kind of one of those things that had a lot a big hit in terms of how many people were interested in it but it never really hit trending whether or not that's because of like the international side of things and hasn't got it so it hasn't got the numbers but um it was funny just to see how this like weird random 80s movie just was just strange just very strange it is a strange movie but it's strange in a fun way and yeah i i think it sets sets the tone properly right from the beginning um i love the dialogue in it i think the casting was was just really well done. Plus, almost every actor and actress that's that was in it either already was a pretty big actor uh, or went on to become pretty big. Obviously, Robin Wright would end up in uh, a number of things, including uh, House of Cards, the American version, mm. uh, and uh, Carrie Ulls, who's the the main character, Wesley. He'd go on to play Robin Hood in Men in Tights. He was in the Hot Shots, the first Hot Shots movie. Uh, he was in Saw, which is weird. Mm weird jump but he he's popping around the guy who played Inigo Montoya Mandy Patikin has yeah. a very strong history in television I think he was on Criminal Minds he was more recently in Homeland Andre the Giant of course from yeah. uh, wrestling you can do this with almost every yeah. single one of the characters no it was it was a really good fun fun movie and I'm just really glad I've seen it and this is sometimes where Disney Plus comes in of just having that opportunity to, to catch up on a movie that you maybe haven't seen or just a classic that you have seen so many or you haven't seen it in a long time i think this one might be one of those ones where a lot of people haven't seen it because it's not been on streaming um i'm really hoping disney kind of work out a way of sort of sorting out uh, licensing for this movie to kind of get it everywhere because um yeah I, it's just it was a really fun movie and it was kind of quite nice having you know when usually when we do our retro movies you've kind of always seen them and it's like it was like no this is one i felt like straight away was just like nope we, I need to see this movie. I've, there's too much interest in this. Um, because every other time, you know, they announce movies. It's like, why did this movie get its own press release when every other movie doesn't get that? There was something about this one that they knew how they were going to announce it, that it, was, that it was something special. And I can see it now. Yeah, it's enjoyable. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, at least give it a shot. Like I said, you'll be more aware of stuff in other movies because it gets referenced a lot. And hopefully you do enjoy it. Um, and of course, if you've already seen it and you know your your opinion on it, there's no reason not to watch it again if you enjoyed it the first time around. Uh, I don't think it'll ever hit trending on Disney Plus because it's more of a slow burn. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, you're not going to get too many movies from the 80s where it's like, oop, this immediately jumped up to number one and dethroned Frozen and, and uh, Star yeah. Wars and whatnot. But Unless it was Star Wars Day, which everything did. And, 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 even, they, and even they all dropped out within a few days. But... It was, it's like I said, it's just a really nice, good, solid addition to Disney Plus for, you know, for us, for, with our age group. You know, this is that kind of thing of like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that grew up on this 
and yeah, it's just a good family one. There was just I was I was just thinking then there's a, there's a couple of scenes in it. They're just absolutely just bonkers. It's just hold on, I'll let you climb up first because then we can have a bit of a fight. <laughs> just like oh yeah, yeah, you, you've got to love that or. Um... You know, they're, they're about to storm the castle and he's like, well, we've only got the three of us. We can't do it. And it's like, well, what do we have that hand cart? Well, why didn't you mention we had a hand cart when I was <laughs> It is, it is strange, but yeah, I'd love to know everyone's thoughts on it in the comments below. Get in touch with us. On that note, guys, go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like it, subscribe, and follow on all the different audio and video platforms that we're on. And also as well, just a big thank you to our patrons again. And as I said, a good thing with um, patrons is they do get access to these for a little access early for them for um, helping out. So on that note, guys, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys soon. Laters. <laughs>